tracking a fog-filled overnight and morning, which will impact visibility and create the potential for slick roads. Everything you need to know before the AM commute coming up. And an iconic piece of Rochester could soon be no more. We're finding out how residents are using their creativity to keep the corn cob around. KIMT News 3 at 10 starts right now. KIMT News 3, coverage you can count on. This is KIMT News 3 at 10. Well, thank you for joining us. I'm Katie Lang. And I'm George Mallet. We start tonight with major new developments in the investigation of an officer-involved shooting on the railway. It is a story you will not see anywhere else. KIMT was there the night of November 29th, just after Union Pacific Special Agent Lewis Minor fired and hit Nathan Olson at the intersection of 9th Street Northwest in North Monroe Avenue in Mason City. We know there was an altercation between Minor and Olson that turned physical, but until now there have been a number of unanswered questions regarding Minor's conduct that night. But KIMT is digging into the investigation tonight to get those answers for you. Yes, indeed, Katie. There are three major unknowns in this investigation that we've been working to shed light on. The first, what video evidence does the Iowa Department of Criminal Investigation have to work with? Second, what policy does Union Pacific Railroad have when it comes to agents using firearms? And third, did Special Agent Minor have other options to subdue Olson? To get you some answers, we went right to the source. Our source for information on the railroad shooting, Union Pacific's head of communications, Raquel Espinoza. Question number one, do officers wear body cameras or have car cameras? Espinoza's statement, while Special Agent Minor was not wearing a body camera, his vehicle was equipped with a forward-facing camera. And how many agents are armed and what is policy on force in general? Says Espinoza, all special agents are sworn police officers and carry firearms. Our policy states agents will use reasonable force to protect the life of the agent or another person and effectively bring an incident under control. Raising the question, do officers have any non-lethal options? Espinoza, agents carry pepper gel or spray, tasers and batons. And as far as why Special Agent Minor used his gun instead of those options, well, we still don't have answers. We do know, though, he's on paid administrative leave while the Iowa DCI completes its investigation. And the man who was shot, Nathan Olson, remains hospitalized at Mercy Medical Center, North Iowa. As of tonight, he's listed in fair condition. Well, we have continuing coverage on a story we first brought you last night. A school bus belonging to Belmont Clemmy School District was struck by a semi Tuesday afternoon at the intersection of County Highway C20 and Page Avenue in Worth County. There were four students and a driver on board, and the force of the collision was so strong it caused the vehicle to do a complete 180 degree spin. You can see it caused significant damage. Now today, KIMT sat down with Randy Doherty, who was driving the bus during the scary incident, and explains how he kept his cool. Stay calm, stay quiet. I'm going to use the radio. I got to get this moving. So, and they were great. They were they handled it very well. Doherty and the students on board were taken to the hospital in Belmont to be examined for injuries. Thankfully, all of them are okay. Well, we are halfway through the work week. And we are looking at some thankfully higher temperatures, but foggy conditions as well. Well, let's go to KIMT Storm Team 3 meteorologist Sarah Knox for a check of our forecast. Sarah. Thank you, Katie George. Yes, indeed, we're dealing with some fairly thick fog. In fact, the National Weather Service has issued a dense fog advisory for the entire area. Now, this goes until 8 a.m. tomorrow morning, so it's definitely going to hinder your morning commute, especially when it comes to visibility. Visibility as we speak, all of us under one mile. Normally, we want to see 10. We are quite far from where we need to be. In fact, Preston, they're at a perfect zero. So very difficult to see out there. And also with the excess moisture in the air, you may get to see a few slick spots on the roadways, especially if they are untreated. As for tomorrow morning school, the, the temperature is looking to stay fairly nice. We just have to deal with those foggy skies. Unfortunately, the clouds will be sticking around throughout the day as well. Now, without further ado, let's take it outside. A live look over the Med City. You can barely see it just because that fog is so thick. George and Katie, back to you. All right, thank you. Well, Rochester residents could be forced to say goodbye to the iconic 
Corn Cob Water Tower. The Seneca Foods property that it sits on is shutting down. No one knows quite where the cob will go. Drawing their favorite Rochester landmark and sharing stories of what the outsized cob means to them. The story is being recorded to be shared with City Council in defense of the towering marker. Chad Allen tells KIMT when he first moved to Rochester, he thought the tower was outrageous. But it's grown on him, and now he can't imagine his city without the ear lighting up our night sky. The more that I draw it, the more that I understand that it's not just a cob, and it's not just a water tower, it's a beacon for blue collar jobs. And uh, it kind of reminds the rest of the world that not everyone in Rochester wears a white lab coat. You, sir, are preaching to the choir. A group will make its case to the Rochester City Council January 7th. Coming up tomorrow on KIMT News 3's Daybreak, we look more into the possibility of the Cobb being named a historic landmark. And talking about history, a piece of history standing tall in Casson. Why this stone water tower is causing a divide between the city and historical society. A tiny seed that packs a powerful punch. Mayo Clinic dietitians let us know why you should include flaxseed in your daily diet. KIMT News 3 at 10, live from Rochester. Your local news with Katie Lang and George Millet. Tracking storms with Storm Team 3 meteorologist Sarah Knox. Medical breakthroughs with Amy Fleming. This is KIMT News 3, local news from your community. We are coverage you can count on. Well, there are some new developments regarding the old stone water tower in Casson. The Dodge County Historical Society is tasked with creating a historical sign for the water tower. But before finishing the task, they discovered some other city council members had submitted their own script. KIMT News 3's Isabella Basco has more on the debate. See behind me, the water tower in Casson is a gem in the community, but the Dodge County Historical Society and city council members are having some disagreements on some changes to the landmark. We just aren't seeing eye to eye right now. The mayor of Casson is frustrated about what he sees as a lack of guidance from the committee. 
charged with coming up with a plan for the water tower. But we did ask at the last meeting that they get together and come back with one recommendation so we don't have to waste our time with this anymore. That did not happen. The Historical Society wants text that is black with gold lettering, font big enough for pedestrians to view with words that will display on both sides of the sign, Cassin Stone Water Tower. Three members of City Council would prefer more official language as well as a different color scheme. Uh, I think that eventually they would wish they hadn't chosen that one because it will, as one would possibly say, stick out like a sore thumb as far as how it looks compared to other such historical markers in the area. Donald Westfall, the executive director of the Historical Society, wants a sign that's understandable. The mayor wants the Water Tower Committee, a combination of city council members and the Historical Society, to make a decision already. Hey, let's keep perspective on what we're, what we're talking about here. It's, uh, we got a $3 million levy we just passed. I like to lose a lot more sleep over that than the Water Tower. The Ad Hoc Water Tower Committee will meet sometime before the next City Council meeting to find some common ground on the tower sign. Reporting in Casson, Isabella Basco, KIMT News 3. And KMT did reach out to city council members, but all declined to comment. Flooding continues to be an issue in North Iowa. Now we're finding out how homeowners hope to solve their water woes. Plus, the holidays are a great time to help those in need. There you go. Merry Christmas to you, sir. All right. How 400 hams will be changing Olmstead County Christmases. That story's next. And I continue to track the dense fog coming into the evening and overnight as well as your morning. The temperatures will stay fairly steady, but a warm up is on the way. I'll let you know all that and more coming up. Yep, can you hear me? Wait, what? Oh, yes. No. Okay, thank you. We track storms to alert you first. This is KIMT Storm Team 3. Weather coverage you can count on.
good Wednesday evening, everyone. Can you believe what's behind me is Mason City? The fog is very thick, not just over Mason City, but all across the entire area. And that's made our visibility go down way low. As for US 52 in Rochester, we are seeing the fog, but at least we can see some headlights there. Unfortunately, though, this fog will be staying thick and that's what's prompting a few alerts. Now, not just the air quality alert. This is actually until 6 p.m. tomorrow. Now, what this means is there are fine particles in the air, and because we've had such stagnant weather conditions without very strong winds, that's allowed those particles to build up. You'll notice it just encompasses Minnesota, but still, all sensitive groups may want to limit their time outside. Now, on to the dense fog advisory. That encompasses the entire viewing area to the west and to the northwest. This is until 8 a.m. on Thursday. Day. And as, as I said earlier on in the newscast, that could cause some problems when it comes to the morning commute. Visibility as we speak, very low. Only a few of us seeing um, over a mile of visibility. Preston's still at that solid zero. The fog is very thick. The winds, not very strong at all, not helping to move this fog. So when it comes to the commute forecast, I've put us in the okay category because we're going to be dealing with some visibility issues and untreated roadways, sidewalks. Also could see a few more slick spots thanks to the excess moisture in the air. By the time we get into the evening hours, we're dealing with mostly cloudy skies and things should be much drier. As for Storm Tracker 3 Doppler radar picking up on the cloud cover and the fog, I'm going to bring us to the west though because that is our next weather maker. And when I say that, I mean the sunshine. I'm tracking this high pressure as it starts to move eastward, and when it does, it's going to bring us some sun. Sky Tracker 3 actually is going to pick up on that. Here we are now. Picking up on all of that fog, continuing into the overnight hours, things will attempt to break apart, but that just won't be the case. The fog will stay strong, and so will the low stratus clouds. But here we go as we head on into Thursday evening and ultimately into Friday, the high pressure takes over. Looking very much forward to that. Current temperatures right now, all of us in the 20s. Forest City, a little warmer at 28 degrees. As far as where we're going for December 18th through the 22nd, we'll get this. We have an 80 to 90 percent chance that will have warmer than average temperatures. We're warmer already above average coming into tonight with temperatures sticking around that 20 degree mark. Now the seven day forecast where the weekend is always in view. Well, we've got some great weather on the way. Just have to get past this foggy night tonight and tomorrow alongside the cloud cover. However, look at the weekend, 37 on Saturday, sunshine. I am just so excited above average all the way through. I'm going to put shorts on, 37. Awesome. Absolutely, yeah. I grab your snorkelers. Let's go swimming. <laughs> right. Native Minnesotans here. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Well, it is an ongoing problem that what has some Mason City residents considering, well, it's a thorn in their side. Check out this footage from flooding. This is back in October. It's not the first time rainwater's caused damage to homes here. Tonight, homeowners from Plymouth Road met with members of the city administration to talk fixes, including new culverts and water flows something residents say they're looking forward to. They have done a lot of work, and I'm very impressed with Nate and the work that he has done, and it's good to know um, they are working. We're moving forward, and that's all we can do, one day at a time. Well, city officials telling KIMT they hope to have a solution in place to negate the flooding come January. 400 Rochester residents will now have a Christmas dinner thanks to our area first responders. KIMT News 3's Brooke McKivergan was there today as they lent a helping ham. She joins us live in Rochester now. Brooke? Well, Katie, today I heard more thank yous and holiday well wishes than I have in a really long time, but rightfully so as the community came together today in a pretty hamtastic way. Thank you, Jesus, Thank you. for this lesson. Partnering with Hy-Vee, Hormel, and police, fire, Gold Cross Ambulance, and we're passing out free hams for the holidays. 400 hams, to be exact. For the holidays, to help out. You know, things are tough around this time of year. And people are very excited to be receiving a free ham for the holiday, and it's, it's great for us to be handing them out and people being appreciative, and it's, it, it's fun to be giving something away. Thank you so much. I love it. Great idea. And it's not just those receiving who are having fun. Everybody's happy. I can get rid of my hand. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Thank yeah, yous thank you. and Christmas cheer thing? being shared. Merry Christmas. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. 
and many who perhaps wouldn't have had such a Merry Christmas if it weren't for these helping hands will now go home with the makings of a full plate ah, I'm getting sick of the turkey and a full heart. Thank you, Lord. They got lots of help out here. This is wonderful. Thank you so much. Every First responders tell me this can be the start of a tradition for many years to come. Reporting live in Rochester, Brooke McKivrigan, KIMT News 3. All right, well, thank you, Brooke. This is the first year ever that Rochester first responders participated in this event. But Hy-Vee and other first responders passed out over 5,300 hams across eight states. Two North Iowa Transit Agencies will soon have new buses added to their fleet. The Iowa Transportation Commission approved $7 million to fund 91 new buses for transit agencies across Iowa. Mason City will be receiving three of those buses to replace buses that have reached the end of their useful life. Ralph Madison is a five-year veteran bus driver for the city and started out with the old diesel-powered buses before moving to the newer gasoline-powered ones. He says the new buses could inspire more people to take transit. And it comes after a recent survey looking into just that. We've taken a survey and they say uh, uh, they really support the people that don't, don't drive or don't have a car. According to Transit Operations and Safety Manager Dylan Schulte, November ridership this year averaged 715 people per day, more than 165,000 annually. High levels of lipoprotein cholesterol, also known as LDL or bad cholesterol. It's something a third of Americans deal with. Lifestyle changes can lower your bad cholesterol and reduce the risk of heart attack and stroke. Mayo Clinic News Network's Ian Roth explains one way to do that by adding a daily dose of a tiny seed that's packing a powerful nutritional punch. This tiny nugget isn't a grain, but a seed. Seeds are very concentrated little packages full of nutrients. Mayo Clinic dietitian nutritionist Catherine Zaratsky says flaxseed is high in healthy fat, vitamins and minerals. Plus, flax seeds are a great source of fiber and fiber can be beneficial in helping reduce our overall cholesterol level. And most Americans don't get enough fiber. It's good for digestion, heart health and for people who have diabetes, it can be beneficial in helping regulate their blood glucose. Zaratsky says you don't have to add a lot of flax to your diet to get the benefits. Try adding it to your smoothies. Starting with even a few teaspoons just to see how you like it and if you like the taste and the texture. Um, without overdoing the calories is a good way to start. Whether you choose whole or ground flaxseed, just keep it in a cool, dark place. Zaratsky recommends whole flax for the best nutritional value. Grind it because that allows your body to more readily absorb the nutrients that are in that flax. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Ian Roth. Drinking a moderate amount of alcohol is associated with fewer hospitalizations compared to both drinking heavily and not drinking at all. Researchers at Harvard define moderate drinking as one glass of wine per day. In Studio 3, Amy Fleming, KIMT News 3. Wildfires ravaged California and we're finding out how students in southern Minnesota are trying to help. Plus, honoring Rochester residents, we'll take you to the ceremony where the outgoing and beloved mayor handed out the city's highest honor.